peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I want to put out a quick testimony video. Um, remember 2 Thessalonians 1.10, When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. We're supposed to have testimonies, brothers and sisters Christ. For, our, for 2 Corinthians 1.12 says, For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. Testimony of our conscience? You're giving testimony. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.6, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Brothers and sisters Christ, we're supposed to have testimonies. Now, sometimes we think, when you think testimony, brothers and sisters Christ, we automatically think at salvation. That's your very first testimony that you have. What's that first testimony? God saving you. That's the first testimony. It's not the only one. Brothers and sisters Christ, there's, there's people that believe that that's the only testimony. No, you can have testimonies where God saved you as a saved sinner. There's times I have testimonies where God saved me because I got myself in a mess. There's times where God had to use me as a bad example and I had to give that testimony as a, using me as a bad example. There's times I've had to use testimonies using other brethren as bad examples. Okay? Then there's times where I could use me, my testimonies as a good example and other brethren's testimonies. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to have testimonies. It doesn't end at salvation. That's where it starts, having testimonies. Okay, so I have a testimony from a brother in Christ that emailed, and I want to use this as an encouragement, that um, people are still getting saved to this day. People are still getting saved. And that uh, people still have testimonies, living for the Lord, where God is still doing great things in the brethren's lives today. Right? Some testimonies are for us to learn from. Like I said, when it comes to being the best bad example, I've been a really, really good bad example. And I've used those bad examples, my faults, my failings, to encourage the brethren not to make the same mistake I did. It's a testimony. This is what happened to me. Don't let it happen to you when it comes to the bad. Good testimony. This is what happened to me. God saved me. It needs to happen to you. Right? So this brother in Christ, we're going to get into it, uh, says, Hi, Brother Philip. My name is, and then he gives his name, I was saved by the Lord Jesus in September 2020. I understand this is three years ago, but I still have testimonies from brethren that are still getting saved today. They seem to be less and less. I'd love to hear more testimonies of present tense, but this is still a good testimony. Roughly six weeks after my son died. Good testimonies have a point where you're at a broken point in your life. Really good testimonies, I've noticed. Not all. But a good test, a really good testimony is you're at a broken point. Something, uh, you hit a wall. He said, roughly six weeks after my son died, he was my fifth son and his name is, and it gives the son's name, I have had six sons in total, praise the Lord. He had put me on my, he had put it on my heart to write to you via email, brother. I have waited for him to say so. Prayer, Lord, when should I do this? Lord, should I do this? Praise God. 
So after my son died, the Lord drew me to read the King James Version from start to finish. That's a big undertaking, okay? Brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, for this brother in Christ, uh, it's, an, it's a big undertaking for the first time. Once you get it through the first time, and then you make it a habit to keep going through, the next time gets easier, the next time gets even easier, the next time, and, it, and next thing you know, you're going through this a lot. But I have to admit, that first time I went through this, uh, especially the Old Testament, I'd gone through the New Testament, wasn't too hard. It was the Old Testament that was, it was trying having to be patient because ha when you're newly saved, most of the Old Testament you're not going to get. And to this day, there's still a lot of the Old Testament when it comes to the prophecies and everything, I don't get. There are prophecies that already happened. I had to go through teachings and had brethren that did. God opened the scriptures to them and they were able to teach me. Okay? But getting through that Bible that first time, it was not easy. And I'm pretty sure the brethren out there have testimonies of their first time trying to make it I had to sit down, I played Alexander Scorvey, I opened the Bible, and I followed along in the King James Bible from Genesis 1-1 all the way through to Revelation. Every night for two to three hours a night, I went hardcore every day trying to get through the whole Bible. I wanted to say I've been through the whole Bible once, and when I got through it, you know what the Lord said? In my heart, this is what the Lord said. The Lord said, good job, good job. Do it again. And I'm like, what? <laughs> really? And like I said, it gets easier and easier as you go through it. But we're supposed to be staying in God's Word every day. So this brother's testimony is he, some, he got put on his heart. I need to read this book. I need to read this book from cover to cover. It was all I could focus on and praise the Lord for convicting me of what a filthy sinner I was. The true plan of salvation can only be found in the King James Bible. Now, I've said this before, Brother Jesus Christ, because I always get these eight questions, and I always try to answer them before they try to come up with these questions. It says, well, you're telling me nobody can get saved off the Bible perversions. Yes and no. Yes, they cannot get saved. If they preach, if they truly, some of these buildings, they were once King James Bible believers. And what happened was they have a gospel that they preach that's the true plan of salvation out of this. And when they're transitioning over to Bible perversions, they get rid of the King James Bible, and they start using NIVs, NASVs, the message, whatever. But they still keep preaching the gospel that's out of the King James Bible. So even though you get, these people are using NIVs, they can get saved because it's not about having to read it. It's supposed to be spoken, read. You can read the gospel. Someone can preach the gospel, the true plan of salvation to you. And you can get saved whether you're using a King James Bible or an NIV or an ASV. But when you truly get saved, God's going to bring you to this book. This is God's perfect written word. All other Bibles, I want nothing to do with them. The other Bible perversions, I don't want the King James Bible authorized version. That's it. Right. So when I make that statement, yeah, if they actually preach the gospel out of their Bible versions, and a lot of times they do, the easy believism, there is no really repentance. Repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. So it's not a big issue. We can just throw repentance out. And now we can even throw prayer out, and we're only teaching belief, because that's what their Bible versions push, belief. Belief, belief, only belief, only belief, head belief, head belief. They take parts of the gospel out so people won't get saved. If they truly preach from those Bibles, then you'll never get saved. Someone had to come along and preach you the true plan of salvation only found in the King James Bible. The King James Bible definition of true repentance. When God does it, change of mind. When man does it, it's a change of heart. So don't fall for this. Oh, repentance is just a change of mind. Going from unbelief to belief. That's heresy. That's false. God, it's another way of trying to say ye can be as gods knowing good and evil. It's elevating man to be God, ye can be as gods. God, when he repents, has a change of mind. When man repents, it's a heart issue. It's always a heart issue. It's a change of heart. It's godly sorrow for sinning against him. Okay. And when and this brother in Christ was reading this Bible, he says, Praise the Lord for convicting me of what a filthy sinner I am. Oh, I'm bad. 
I've heard this from so many brethren. I'm bad. You know, the story about the, uh, the Pharisee and the publican. I'm not as other men are. I mean, he's a sinner. I, I'm a sinner. But I'm not as other men are. You have to come to a point like this brother did. I'm a filthy sinner than I am. God, through the scriptures, will open through the Holy Ghost, will open your heart and show you how filthy and wicked you truly are. And a lot of people don't get this point. They don't get to that point. Yeah, I'm a sinner, but you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners, but I'm not that bad. I'm not like other men are. I'm not a murderer. You know, I, I'm not a drug addict. I know some brothers says Christ got saved were drug addicts, but I'm just saying you have some that say, I wasn't all these things. Yeah, I might have lied a little bit here and there. and I might have did this sin, but I'm not that bad. God can't save you. You're not ready. God can save someone like this and did. After finish reading his written word, I started to come under strong conviction about the fact that he will send me to hell for my sins. Now, fear is there, brothers and sisters of Christ, when it comes to hell. But what saves you is having sorrow in your heart for your personal sins. That's what not, I'm sorry, that's not what saves you. That's what true repentance is. That's what gets repentance to work as it applies to salvation. Having sorrow for that situation. Not fear, sorrow. Everyone I've ever talked to, including myself, I fear hell. When I was lost, I feared it. We all have that fear there. But that fear is what leads you to repentance. And true repentance is having sorrow for your personal sins, for sinning against Him. Coming to Him as a filthy sinner. Okay. That He will send me to hell for my sins. One sin, brothers of Christ. It only takes one sin. And yes, I got very scared of him. What does the Bible say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning. Not the middle. Not the end. It's the beginning. Just, just throwing that out there. I got a study I'm working on right now. Beginning. Okay. Yes, the fear needs to be there. From beginning of wisdom. And yes, I got very scared of him. I remember the moment... I remember the moment watching a street preacher on YouTube and it hit me like a ton of bricks. A lot of people have testimonies like that, Brother Jesus Christ, where they're going and they're going and they're, they're running. They're, like when I was lost, I was running 100 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, going nowhere. <laughs> but the deception that I'm going somewhere, I'm running 100 miles an hour, you just run into that brick wall. Boom. And you crumble. God humbles you. God breaks you. I ran up to my room and begged God to save me. I told him that I believed that the Lord Jesus died on the cross and paid for my sins. I told him that I'm a child to him and am, I, I, and, I, and am no good. I begged him to take smoking from me and he did. I just knew that he saved me. You know how the Lord speaks to you, but you don't hear him speak audible words? Yeah. You just, it's something in here. You're not going to hear audible words. What people who say they hear audible words, you got to be careful who, who they're really hearing. It's not the Lord. Okay? It's, it's in the heart. It's the Holy Spirit's in here now when you get saved. And he's, he's saying what I believe, I hope and believe, that he's talking about the smoking. He's like, Lord, please take this from me. After salvation, God saves him. And he's like, the smoking, God took that from me. He, he's in me. He's helping me walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Okay? Okay, moving on, the Lord saved me. It's like, now what? Remember that big thing about the Lord saved you, now what? Moving on, the Lord had a video of Brother Brian pop up on my YouTube, and he told me to watch it. Okay, you're saved now? Now let me get you some good Bible preaching. And don't get me wrong, King James Video Ministries, I want to say 21, 2021. Videos at 2021 and earlier, because I think that's it's two years this January that Brian... And I believe he's a brother, but he's fallen. He's turned his back on the eminent return of Jesus Christ, and the quality of that ministry has gone downhill greatly. I would not recommend Born Again Barbarian to anybody. But 2022, 
And, and before that, before he turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, he still had his faults. I still have my faults. We all do. But those videos in the past, I would, I would recommend them. Okay? And those videos are great studies. Okay? Moving on, the Lord had a video of Brother Brian pop up on my YouTube, and he told me to watch it. And from that moment, the Lord showed me through Brother Brian that the King James Version is his perfect written word. My testimony is similar, brother. I, I didn't get saved, and then the Bible version issue, like this brother did, I came to the Bible version issue because I was a professing Christian, a fake Christian, a false convert, and God brought me to the Bible version issue through King James Video Ministries first, through Brother Brian and King James Video Ministries. And then when I got to this as God's perfect written word, okay, now what? Then God's like, okay, here's, you've seen the gospel message, but now you need to watch it again so it's not up here, it hits here. And I repented. And for, uh, I repented, uh, believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessed both in prayer, and asked God to save me. I came to Him on my knees, asking Him to save me. I don't deserve it. Please save me, Lord. All right. With me, it was the other way around. This brother, he got saved first, then came to the knowledge that this is God's prayer. God's going to bring you in all truth. The Holy Spirit comes in, evidence brings you in all truth. And just could not get enough of learning from the Lord. Same thing, brother. When I was newly saved, I spent hours. I, I slowly, the Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games that I would spend six to eight hours a day on, uh, dwindled because I had to make room for, I had to, at my heart, just something in me. I needed to spend time watching Bible studies. I'd watch three, to three hours of Bible studies. I start starting my day with the Word of God, ending my day with the Word of God. And I just went study after study because I was never taught the truth. I learned so much from Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries. That's why it pains me to say, hey, he, he's not the man he once was. It pains me not to be able to recommend him present tense. Okay. But yeah, the old stuff where Brian was in a standing position where he loved the Lord more than his own life. He loved the Lord. He loved his word. The ministry was a life calling, not a income, not a business. That Brian, he did a lot of great work for the Lord. He led me to Christ, just like he did this brother. He led me to the Bible version issue, the truth of the Bible version issue, like he did this brother. All right. Could get enough of learning from the Lord. That's one of the biggest signs of someone who's truly saved and born again. When you first get saved, you have such a hunger and such a fire for God's Word, and you just start devouring all the teachings, eternal security, the true plan of salvation. When you get into more in depth about more, you got the, the basics, and God saves you. God shows you a lot more about the plan of salvation today. He uh, He opens the scriptures to to eternal security, to dispensational teaching to the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ, the Godhead versus the Trinity. He opens the scriptures to you when it comes to instruction and righteousness. He lets us know about different dispensations that's not ours, the time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, eternity, the new heaven and the new earth, and Jerusalem coming down. I just started learning so much about it, learning about the Old Testament, things that were going on in the Old Testament. You know, I just started devouring it all too. Mm -hmm. That's one of the good marks of someone who's saved. The hard part, brother, uh, you, according to this, you've been saved for three years. The hard part is not burning out, keeping that love of God's Word. There's some brethren that they've been studying God's Word for ten years, and they start getting to the point where they think they know everything, or there's nothing left to learn, and they get there, and that fire they once had starts sizzling, or starts, you know, smoldering, and starts to burn out. Don't let that fire burn out. Go over the same teachings over and over. Keep them hidden in your heart. You've always got to refresh your mind and your heart with the Word of God. Even if it's a teaching you've gone over a million times, go over it another million times. Remember when I read this book? God's like, good job! Do it again. Okay, Lord, it's, I've gone through this book 50 times. Good job! Do it again. Do it another 50 times. Okay, I've been through it a hundred times. Good job. Do it another hundred times. We gotta stay in it. We gotta stay on fire for the Lord and His Word. 
Don't fizzle out. But I understand what this brother's talking about. I've been there. Brother says, Christ, you've been there. Just on fire. I want to learn. I want to learn. Now that I have God's perfect written word in my hands, I want the truth. I want to learn, learn. And God will direct you to somebody that's a Bible-believing, God-fearing man that can teach you. The Jews are God's people. Yes, they are. We are eternally secure Eternally secure in this dispensation. It's one of the things too, eternal security. We are sealed into the day of redemption. There is no uh, unpardonable sin today. There was when Jesus was walking on the earth. There was in the Old Testament. There was when Jesus was walking on the earth. There is in the time of Jacob's trouble. There is in the um, day of the Lord. The only dispensation, the only time period where there is no unpardonable sin to is today. The time of the Gentiles. From the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. It's called the time of the Gentiles. Not because only Gentiles can get saved. It's because salvation went from being salvation is only of the Jews. Jesus Christ said this himself. For salvation is of the Jews. It went from where God came to save just the Jewish people to now God opened the door to the world as a whole. He invited the Gentiles into salvation to get saved. That's why it's called the time of the Gentiles. Not because only Gentiles can get saved. Jews can get saved today. Paul was a Jew. Peter was a Jew. John is a Jew. Luke is a Jew. Titus is a Jew. Jewish mother. Roman father. Uh, Titus, uh, Silas is a Jew. Some of those guys were, most of them were Jews. The early apostles, and all the apostles were, uh, but the early disciples, a lot of them were Jews. There was a lot of Jews getting saved at the beginning, but today, it's, it's going to be kind of rare, but it's still possible. So when I say time of the Gentiles, I'm not saying only Gentiles can say, when it, with the Bible definition, when it's saying time of the Gentiles, it's saying salvation was only of the Jews, and now the Gentiles got invited in. That's why it's called the time of the Gentiles. Salvation has gone out to the world. Anyone can get saved today. Anyone. And when you do get saved, God seals you. That ultimate consequence of sin, now when you sin as a saved sinner, you don't have to face that ultimate consequence of sin. Hell on the lake of fire. There's still physical consequences when you're here on the earth. You can lose rewards in heaven. You can miss out on your inheritance. Be able to come back and rule and reign with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. But your salvation is secure. You're sealed. Okay, You're eternally secure. Amen, brother, that God brought you to that. And brother in Christ, uh, to this brother and all the other brethren, don't let, once you get that uh, eternal security based off the true plan of salvation, don't get me wrong, I come across people the easy believism, you can't tell me I'm not saved, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. You can have stubbornness. You can. There's a difference between uh, being firm in the scriptures and having a firm foundation. This is what I'm standing for and I'm not going to move. The Bible talks about stand, 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 don't faint, don't falter. It's based off this. God's perfect written word. But when you're following a gospel that's foreign to the pages of Scripture, you're following Jesus Christ that's foreign to the pages of Scripture, you don't have a foundation. Or that foundation is you, me, myself, and I. Be careful about that. But I'm glad he's shown you this, brother. It's true. When you're truly saved today, you're sealed into the day of redemption. Don't once... You're firm in the true plan of salvation. The, you got the King James Bible. God's brought you to His perfect written word. Don't let anybody talk you out of the plan of salvation you got saved off of. The true plan of salvation. Repentance towards God. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer. And ask God to save you. And He saves you. And after that, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. A changed life comes after, guaranteed. No changed life. You didn't follow the steps. I'm telling you, every brother a professing... Christian out there that is confronted that tries to downplay the changed life. There doesn't have to be a changed life. They didn't follow the steps that God set up to find salvation. They didn't do it God's way. They didn't come to God on His terms. They tried to find a back door. They tried to come to God on their own terms. Okay? But you've come that way don't let them talk you out of the gospel you got saved. I've seen some brethren that got saved out of the true plan of salvation, and they've fallen away, and now they teach easy believism. Someone talked them out of it. 
There's brethren that once stood for this book as God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. What happened to some of them? They fell away. Someone talked them out of their faith in God's perfect written word. There's some brethren that they, I believe they're saved, born again, that they believed in eternal security. You say they don't anymore. What happened? Someone talked them out of their faith. This being the foundation. It's not God's word that's the foundation. It's man that's the foundation. Don't do that. So we are eternally secure in this dispensation and in eternity with Him. We get to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? Yeah. Don't let people talk you out of that. The Bible talks about, let no man steal thy crown. Are you looking for that blessed hope to catch away the body of Christ with the life that you're living? Has someone tried to talk you out of looking? Ah, oh, Jesus isn't coming back for that. I still believe in the pre-time of Jesus. No, you don't. Has someone tried to talk you out of looking, present tense, the imminent return of Jesus Christ, present tense, looking for that blessed hope? Don't let them. Don't let no man steal thy crown. Don't get distracted by the world, brother, and all the other brethren out there. He's, he's saying that God showed him eternal security and that he's going to spend eternity with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that Jesus is the truth. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Talk about Jesus Christ. I have tried a few dead end beliefs, and thanks to the Lord for taking my son, he broke me and then saved me. Sometimes God, brother, says Christ, there's some brethren out there with such hard hearts, I, I fear for them. And, you know, you read the Bible and see how God deal, how God breaks men in the Bible. Especially when he's dealing with someone with a hard heart. He can get to some extremes to break somebody, to lead you to, to Jesus Christ. And amen when he does it. Amen. If that's what it took to break this brother in Christ, to bring him to the truth, praise the Lord. And that's what this brother's saying. Praise the Lord. In these last days, brothers of Christ, you look how bad it is out there. It's going to take some serious bringing people to their knees to see some people get saved in these last days. It's going to take some serious hitting that brick wall. Romans 8, 18, KJV. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. There's nothing in this world that's worth preventing anyone from getting saved. And there's nothing in this world, brother, says Christ, that's worth getting in the way of your walk with the Lord and being a servant to one another. And being a good ambassador for Jesus Christ to the lost world. There's nothing. That's why the Bible says, um, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world doesn't see the love of the Father in you. When you start loving the world, in other words, things of this world, you start loving it more than you love the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen some brethren fall away. That things of this world are more, you love the things of this world more than you love the Word of God. You start loving these things of the world more than you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You start loving the flesh, things of the flesh, and things of the world more than you love preaching the truth, the gospel, to the lost world. There's nothing in this world that's worth getting in the way of getting saved. Nothing. Anger is not worth it. Bitterness is not worth it. Vengeance, holding vengeance in your heart. Hate, anger, bitterness, envy, vengeance. Give it all to the Lord. Get saved today. If you are saved, none of that stuff is worth getting in the way of your walk with the Lord your fellowship with the brethren, and your usefulness in, in ministry in any way, shape, or form. It's not worth it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Thank you, brother, for that. Thank you. This is obviously the short version of the Lord saving me. I thank you, brother, for your service to the brethren, and I pray for you regularly. We just did a prayer, <laughs> we did our prayer video. Yes, thank you, thank you for praying for me. 
I need it. I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying for all the brothers and sisters of Christ out there. I long for the Lord to descend in the clouds to catch us up. Amen. So do I. So do I, brother. So do I. I also want to I want to meet be meat for the master's use. Brothers is Christ, I kind of I didn't mention that. Thank you for this, brother. I didn't mention that in the uh, the video I just put out about prayer requests, but that God can use us. I do pray that sometimes. Lord, use me. Sometimes it feels like God isn't hardly using me. I need to be faithful in little, so I can be faithful in much. Okay, the little that little God gives me, I need to be faithful in it. Okay, I need to start. I don't want to be one of those people that complain about not having you know. Uh, as big a ministry as this person over here, or not being as effective in ministry as this person, it seems that this person is over here because of the numbers, you know. But I want also I want to be meat for the master's use too. I say, Lord, use me, please. Like I said, there's times God has used me as a bad example versus a good example. I said that before in videos that uh, there's times where God has used me as a bad example, and I have to give a testimony on something I did wrong to encourage the brother not to make the same mistake that I did. To not stumble the way I stumbled. Fail the way I failed. I'd rather be a good example, but there's times that I have to use bad things, the mistakes I did, my faults, to encourage the brother not to make the same mistakes. I want to be a good example for the, for the body of Christ, but I failed. I have videos, I failed the body of Christ, I have videos apologizing, repenting, forsaking, and getting back to my walk with the Lord. But I too pray, can I, Lord, use me, use me. Lord, I have that prayer, can I, I just want to leave one person face to face. I'm out there handing out gospel tracts, laying gospel tracts places, and I'm waiting for that one person that's truly broken, that wants to get saved, but doesn't know how, and I can lead them to Jesus Christ. I, it still hasn't happened yet. I'm not talking about online. I'm not talking about me laying out gospel tracts. Someone could have gotten saved through one of the gospel tracts that I laid out. But I really, one of my prayers is I would love to lead someone to Christ face to face. Very hard in these last days. I want to be meat for the Master's use. And that's the whole point of me being in ministry. It's a life calling. I'm doing this to serve God. I'm not doing this to get something out of it down here. Some brethren have lost sight of that. I am still young in Christ, but I look forward to Him using me when He says I am ready. You never know, brothers of Christ. My biggest thing is, is like I did, I spent the first four years of being saved, I spent it just studying the Word of God, and God was working on me through sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? God had a lot of work to do on me. A lot of cleanup, and there's times that I fought God in, in my cleanup, in my sanctification. Holding on to things that I needed to let go of. Sin and wickedness, worldliness. Okay? It's been three years according to this, but I'm just pointing that out there for all, brethren. When you're newly saved, the first thing you need to focus on is your walk with the Lord, and there's two big parts to it. Two big parts to it. Prayer is one of them, but the two big parts is sanctification, God cleaning up your life so you can be really useful to Him. Sanctification and, and hiding God's Word in your heart. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. How I walk, how I live my life. God's going to teach you through his word. You're going to spend a, the, your first few years of your life in hardcore sanctification and in studying this book so you can hide the doctrines in your heart, the instruction and righteousness in your heart, how to preach the gospel, you know, the do's, the don'ts. God's going to show you history, him and history, the Old Testament to the, to the eternity. You're going to spend a lot of time in this book in studying, reading and studying, and a lot of time sanctification. And God's going to get you to the point, brother, that he's going to be like, okay, I want to use you now. And that's what this brother's talking about. When he says, I'm ready. There's going to come a time when God's going to be like, don't get me wrong, for the ministry of reconciliation, my biggest thing is, is while you're doing those two things, 
Get some good gospel tracts. Make sure you read the gospel tracts. Make sure the gospel lines up with the King James Bible. It's gospel tracts using King James Bible verses, not other Bible perversions, Catholic Bibles like the NIV, NASV, and all that garbage that's out there. Uh, make sure it's King James Bible. Make sure the tract is saying at the end to get a King James Bible, like you did, brother. But one of the things you can do until God's ready to use you, like in a, a ministry, a full-time ministry, part we say full-time, part-time, but there's no such thing worse in here like full-time, part-time. Ministry is ministry. So there's some people in the Bible that's more active in ministry, where it's more it takes up more of their life. And there's the simple person that just preaches the Word of God when the door opens, lays gospel tracts here and there. Okay. Right now you can be like that. Get some gospel tracts. Lay them at places when you go places. Uh, and then God will give you courage to hand them out. And that's, that's a good start to serving God. You start with prayer. You start with reading God's Word. Hiding it in your heart. Living it. Sanctification. And then the next part is laying gospel tracts out. And you'll go from there. Okay. I do put out leaflets. Praise the Lord. I do put out leaflets that the Lord had me design and print. So he does, I'm sorry. He does put out gospel tracts. But to the brethren out there, that's the next step. And he's doing it. So you're doing that. Praise the Lord. And a few times when the Lord has opened a door, I have spoken to people about him. Praise the Lord. That's how it happens with me. I was a coward when I first started. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, brothers and Christ. I'm not going to be all prideful like some people are. I was a coward. And believe it or not, there's still times today that I, I, I chicken out. That that cowardice creeps up sometimes. And God will open a door that I don't go through. Don't let it discourage you. Pray the Lord, Lord, give me more courage next time that when that door opens, I will talk to that person. I will go through it and I will talk and witness for you, oh Lord. But when I first got saved, I was a coward. I was scared to talk to people. Not because I was ashamed of being saved. I talked to my family. I talked to my neighbors. I talked to people that I knew. I'm talking about talking to people you don't know. Just someone you come across. And then there's that whole thing about they could easily go off on you. I've talked to people where they've spit at me. They've cursed me, cussed me out and cursed at me. I've had one call the police on me for handing them a gospel tract. I had a police get called on me once. I handed them a gospel tract, tried to talk with them about the true plan of salvation, and they got mad because I said, if you didn't get saved through the, the God's way, through His perfect written word, you're not saved. And they got mad. And they called the cops on me. Okay, it's, it's a different... The Lord blessed me, and He helped me through those situations. All right? It's difficult. It's very difficult. I was a coward at the beginning. I was scared to death to go talk to people that I didn't know, strangers, about Jesus Christ. I was able to talk to family members. I lost a lot of family that really don't want much to do with me anymore. I lost all my friends. I have no friends. I mean, I've got friends that aren't enemies. Like, i got neighbors that are friendly, but that friend that's closer than a brother? You know, we used to say best friends in high school. I had tons of friends. Brothers is Christ, but uh, like friends, but I only had two best friends. Friends that were closer than a brother. They're like a brother to me. I lost all my friends when I got saved. Those kind of friends. They were, uh, the one, a lot of them were part of the uh, uh, Babel buildings. I lost my daughter to the world. And then I lost her in death. And there's still brethren that attack me trying to use my daughter to attack me. Please stop. I know the enemy's not going to stop. But if you're truly saved and born again, please stop. I lost my daughter to the world. I tried preaching the gospel to her, but she saw me as a lost man. She knew me when I was lost. My family members the same way. They knew me when I was lost. They needed someone to come along that they didn't know when they were lost. Because all they could see me is being like a hypocrite. Oh, you're just a hypocrite. I knew who you were when you were lost. And you professed to be a Christian then too. 
That's the hard part, going from being a false convert to truly being born again. Everyone that I tried preaching to, I already lost my testimony with them. I lost my testimony with them. Brothers and sisters of Christ, it's tough. This brother's doing it. You brothers are doing it. Brothers and sisters of Christ are doing it. The gospel track and everything. Don't give up. Right? I lost my ex-wife to the world. Because I stood for Jesus Christ. Through her, I lost a lot of uh, testimonies with, brother, uh, with my neighbors. Now, I know some of the brethren have been following the ministry, knows that whole story. I'm not going to go into that whole story. But there's, you know, it's hard preaching the gospel. Very hard. Right? We need to be exhorting the brethren and encouraging the brethren. When doors open, preach the gospel. Preach the true plan of salvation. Hand out gospel tracts. Lay gospel tracts everywhere. Okay? Don't quit because we feel like we're in the last days and nobody wants the gospel and everybody just doesn't want the gospel. I don't care if I give out a million gospel tracts and they all, all of them get torn up except one, and one person reads it, one person gets saved, all the million gospel tracts were worth it because of that one person. If I preached the gospel face to face to a million people and one person got saved, it was worth it. It's twofold. It's worth it because that's what God commands us to do, but it was worth it if one person got saved. Today you got brethren that think that if millions of people are, if we're not having a huge revival and millions of people aren't getting saved, it's not worth it. It's worth it. Don't give up on it, brothers and Christ. Don't give up on it. Don't lose that fire that you had when you first got saved. Sometimes you got to come to the Lord and get that fire, fire rekindled and get it going again. Take some time with the Lord. I'm willing to prove myself to you that I am indeed a brother in Christ. We're doing a study series right now called Prove Your Own Selves. Examine whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. What does that really mean? And we're going into it. It means that if you're in Christ Jesus, God has made you four things. Are those four things being shown in your life? Are you proving those four things? God has made into us wisdom. He's made into us righteousness. He's made into us sanctification. Okay. And I'm working on it. He made it into a sanctification, redemption. In other words, are you looking for that blessed hope? He's made it into us redemption. Remember, we're only two-thirds redeemed. Our soul and our spirit are redeemed. My soul is connected to Jesus Christ. That's why I'm called the body of Christ. This wicked body of flesh is still here. I, I'm not fully redeemed yet. I'm sealed into the day of redemption, but I'm not fully redeemed yet. Made it into us redemption. Are you looking for that blessed hope? But that's what I think this brother's getting at. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Uh, 13, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. King James Version. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And I've got the same verse right there in my, bio, in my notes doing a study. Uh, the brother's listening to that. He's like, I'm willing to prove myself. That's a good thing. Don't let anybody talk you out. No, you don't have to prove yourself. Yes, in these last days, brothers and sisters Christ, we desperately need to be proving ourselves one to another with the life that we're living for Jesus Christ. Living for Him every day. Living for Him every day. Okay? The Lord will let you know I'm sure. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit in me will bear witness with the Holy Spirit that's in Him. Okay? There's a great testimony, brothers and sisters Christ. A great testimony. Uh, I know it says you got saved in 2020. I, I would love to hear a testimony from a brother or sister in Christ newly saved that got saved today in the last couple of years, uh, especially with everything that's going on. It would really encourage us that, hey, brethren are still getting saved today. Brethren are still getting saved today. Um, please, brother says Christ, this ministry, part of it was prayer and testimonies. If you've got a testimony, not just of salvation, if you've got a testimony on how God saved you in your life, you did something stupid or something bad happened to you and God got you through it. You have a great testimony. I'd love to hear it. You're giving God all the glory and giving God all the thanks. I'd love to hear it. It's, it's a good encouragement to hear great testimonies from brothers and sisters in Christ on how God is working in you and doing great things in you in your life. 
protecting you, saving you. See, that saving starts at salvation, eternal salvation. He eternally saves you at salvation. But there's times in my life where I've made mistakes and God has saved me in this life. Picked me back up, put me back on my feet, and told me, keep going. Every time I fall down, picks me back up, puts me on my feet, and says, keep going. Thank you, brother in Christ, for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to end this. This was a great testimony. Brother says Christ, we have an email we, to, for this ministry. We have a P.O. box for this ministry. If you've got some great testimonies that's on your heart that you want to share with the brethren, if you've got your own, if you're doing your own videos, share them. If, you, if not, you can email me and I'll share them to encourage the brethren that, hey, God is still working in us. God is still there for us. And we still got work to do. Okay? We still got work to do. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.